All right. So even though I'm dying in anticipation to hear your first impression of this movie called Crawl, I think I can wait for one second because my friend Jordan here was um, tweeting the other day, and I just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. She had tweeted like she... You wrote, oh. <laughs> it's my annual PSA about the women's restroom. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's like an urban legend. What, you know, we don't, people had always heard that uh, public female restrooms were actually notoriously uh, disgusting sometimes. But, you know, it's like one of those things we can't confirm, you know? At least not oh, no. me and the boys hanging out in the boys' room. We have no idea. We just pass stories around and whatever. Yeah. But um, I always thought, like, if, you know, if a dude had, like, a crooked hose problem, like, he might piss everywhere, right? But I right. didn't assume that the ladies d don't have accurate aim. You know, oh. who knows? <laughs> some, some people, I'm like, yo, try not to spray it everywhere. And we have to sit on the toilet to pee. So it's just... Not to put you on the spot to have to retell your, your tweet, but, you know, it's... you tell some good stories on the Twitter. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm definitely going to drag that into the podcast. Mm -hmm. No problem. So funny. I appreciate that. I think you might be the only person who pays attention to what I tweet. So, you know, <laughs> actually, you know, what? that's the funny thing, too, is like, I think what a creepier thing about social media is, you know, people are reading it, you know, people see it. But it's almost like they're creeping because they don't ever acknowledge that it exists. They won't ever tell you that they that they have, but you just know. Right. right? So, so it's like, how many people saw this? I don't really know because they didn't they didn't indicate one way or the other or form an opinion about it. But I never thought about it like that, though. Like, I, you could totally have someone who, like, looks at every single post Everything. or every single yeah. tweet or every single photo mm -hmm. and just never makes their presence known, which is. Let's make it even scarier or take it to the next level. They know all of your check ins. Right. Right. Oh, you just checked in at Orange Theory Gym? All right. You know what I mean? Like, they're so, like, she's late for lunch today. She didn't yeah. check in at uh, Del Taco or whatever. You, know what you know what I mean? Like, Seriously. Like, yeah. Like, did she order the number four? You know? Because you like, Seriously. you like, hi you like, high five something on a Facebook page that indicates like even your favorite order. So they're like, they just got like this whole social media book on somebody. Could you imagine that? Like, it's kind of crazy to think about. It's Thursday. Yeah. They're wearing the red shirt. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, damn. Now they got my wardrobe down. So it like, could almost oh. be the presence of another horror movie. You yeah, know? yeah. John just checked in at the laundry. He must be cleaning his Friday shirt. You know, like, so what is happening? That well, would be kind of great tonight. Thanks, John. You're welcome. But it could also <laughs> be a funny sketch. Like, you could easily have, like, a Saturday Night Live sketch where just people are out loud saying all of your social media check-ins. Right. And your favorites and like everything that you've liked is just like it. Yeah. Cause that would be social media in reality. Right. Yeah. Like how awkward would it be if it was actually people were like spouting at the mouth, like everything that they were clicking on their phone, you know, like or almost like drunk history, but with your social media presence. Ooh, that'd be real funny. Like it dig up be. like Facebook version one or something from like yeah. the mid 2000s. And it's like, what, get hammered what? and reenact social media postings yeah. and stuff. But like, you pulled your, your tweet from like Thursday, March 15th, uh, 2015 at 3 a.m. And you're just like, oh shit, which mm -hmm. one, which one was, you know what I mean? You know, the timing's bad. You're like, 3 a.m. Well, it's mm -hmm. going to be provocative, drunk and stupid. Or maybe I said way too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, yeah. the filters are off, you know? I always like if it's in the 2010 era, like when I graduated from high school, if it's like a memory that pops up, I'm just like already shaking my head before I read it. And I'm like, it'd be kind of funny to see those like reenacted out with like, you know, my big, heavy, thick bangs going across and like thick eyeliner, just like, I don't know, throwing it back. You know, who's a psychopath is whoever decided to bring your Facebook status posts into like the job mm -hmm. interview, right? You know this? I mean, people do that, yeah. Yeah. It's like the new things. Like, we got your resume and we have your Facebook profile. Okay, here we go. We got a series of questions. Yeah. That would just be brutal. Like, it's such an embarrassment already, but... Ugh, gross. Gross. At least my job is social media, sort of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The good so, stuff. The good stuff. Filtering out all the other stuff, you know. Yep. Yeah. That those creepy readers are reading and not acknowledging. All right. Right um, 
Speaking of grotesque things or creepy things, this movie does have a beast. Let's see what Jordan's first impression of the movie Crawl is without giving away the plot or her ratings or her favorite bits, because we'll get to that later. Let's oh see if God. she can somehow pitch it to you guys without giving away all the good stuff right up front. Well, I'm like trying to make sure I don't hit at anything, but you guys were right last week in what you assumed my thoughts were going to be like was a, oh no, not another ice, ice pirates. <laughs> that, was, that doesn't allude to my reading or any that's of all, my favorite bits. Yeah. So, that's all you have to say. Yeah. Nice. Crack open a cold box of wine or pour something cold on ice because it's the Binge Watchers Podcast. She said, not another ice pirate. Not another one. Like an ice pirate's too. Or Kroll 2, Ice Pirates. We don't know which one was the sequel. I don't know, I actually don't know which one came out first. We'll find out. Maybe somebody will know. We'll go tell you later. I don't know. Podcast is in progress right now. With some uh, home video headlines, and then we'll get into tonight's movie. Uh, the new Beavis and Butthead cartoon is going to drop August 4th. Did you actually get a chance to see the movie that they just kicked out? Not the... Uh, no. Mm-mm. Did you ever see the one they made, like a, well, the original movie they, they kicked out? It's from the 90s, but. Yeah, no, it was a little, like, like that would have definitely been a show that my brother would have watched, and I yeah. probably caught glimpses of it as, like, you know, when he was that age, but I was a little, like, I was probably just on the cusp, like, a little young for it. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, no, I think that would be totally up my alley. It's like everything that I like in TV, you know, animation and stupidity, but. Yeah, yeah, well, the two <laughs> dumb teenagers that were like reviewing, they used to review music videos like on the old MTV show. And uh, now, because they're like Gen X, right? So they're even older than me, but they are in David. Old man David. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm only 29. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And he's not so, here to defend himself. So, And he's not here to defend himself. So I'm going to tease the <laughs> shit out of him. Okay. So um, they used to like review music videos. And then they had their little cartoon adventures in between the video gags. And that's I think that's what paid for the show. I mean, like it was produced by MTV back in the day or whatever. And then like uh, the new one was like a sci-fi thing that kind of makes fun of like the Marvel movies with the multiverse stuff. And that just dropped on Paramount Plus. But they also got picked up for a new show. I saw they loaded one skit on, on you know, to YouTube or whatever, and they're reviewing, like, TikTok videos. I'm oh like, oh, this God. is great. This is incredible. <laughs> like, Genius. they're sitting on their couch, and instead of doing music videos, because, I, I mean, music videos really aren't even made anymore. I mean, like, right. Get, I mean, you get videos on YouTube and Spotify, but it's, like, it's not the same thing. Anyway. Right. They're not as cinematic. They're just more like, get the song. Um, the Evil Dead movies might come back in the form of a cartoon. Like, Bruce Campbell was talking about how he's getting too old to play Ash, like, in the live actions, because he's, like, a very physical actor. If you watch Bruce Campbell's, like, career, he does a lot of pratfalls, like, a lot of vaudeville stunts. He goes through walls. He's in a lot of those old, schlocky, like, independent horror movies, including the whole Evil Dead and Army of Darkness run. So you could you could feel like, yeah, he's probably nursing, you know, some wounds. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he's like, hey, but a cartoon doesn't age, so, like, let me do the voice. And I guess he was talking about this at uh, Comic-Con. So I'm like, yeah, possible Evil Dead animated show? I'm in. Sold. Done. Except for, did you, have you ever seen the Evil Dead and Scooby-Doo meme? Like, they had drawn his character into, like, the Scooby-Doo cartoon. Mm -mm. I was like, oh, they should actually really do that. Like, have a crossover. Just have, like, all the Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. characters get possessed by demons and then have Ash have to come fight them off, you know? Oh, I would love that. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Um... Jeez, a series of actors have died. David Warner died. Paul Sorvino died. <laughs> Yoko Shimada died. So, I mean, it goes along with our theory of the rule of threes. Celebrities always die in three, right? Clusters of famous people are always being taken out. Um, David Warner, let's see. He played a lot of villains and a lot of stuff. He was like a mad scientist in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2. Going all the way back, he was a science fiction villain in Tron, where the arcade came to life. 
Um, time after time, he played Jack the Ripper. He was a good Klingon, but Klingons are kind of intense characters anyway on, like, Star Trek VI. And Waxworks, actually, he was the master of the Waxworks who was trying to trap people's souls in the exhibits in the 1980s Waxworks, which I love. He's awesome in that. Paul Servino, I'm not that familiar with. He, like, plays a lot of mobsters. He's one of the mobsters in Goodfellas. However, he is the dad of a really successful uh, performer, uh, Mia Servino. I don't know if you like that uh, actress, but... Hmm. or actor i mean a few years ago they tried to do the non-gender term to actor which i thought was cool but now if i say it i feel like people who like the other terms might get offended that i'm just using the term actor so i'm like i don't know what to say player <laughs> like right. you know what i mean like person who played these characters in these movies um she's actually better than he is actually i think um but whatever you know legacy right um, Yoko Shimada, she's like from the seventies. She was in this thing called Shogun, which is about like an English, I don't know if he's a Lord, but he's definitely, this falls in line with that stuff that, that Bridgerton type stuff that you like, but this was like an older miniseries in the seventies, like an English Lord or surveyor or somebody gets like shipwrecked. And I think he ends up in feudal Japan and then he ends up working for the Shogunite there. And it's like based on a novel, it's pretty good. Ooh. Um, the show, the miniseries is good, but it's definitely like old school, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like very old school. Um, tonight's movie is Crawl. Um, I think I said it better last week, but I'll just quickly summarize it after I talk about this wine. Um, so we have this, uh, where is it? But this box wine affiliate, if you go to box wine, you can get uh, ten dollars off their their wine stuff. So we have a link, it's called Drink Box. You can get a subscription to a box wine, you can get like a four box of wine, and you feel like you're at the Napa experience. If you're a lush bag, you're gonna love it. If you're an amateur drinker, you're gonna like it too. So you can order a box of wine, use our promo code binge, you'll get ten dollars off. Try it out. We'll leave the link in the podcast description. You can also maybe find the uh, sponsor information on our website. Wine. In a box. In a box. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's just the equivalent of four bottles, but it's still, I mean, hey. I think our theme song says crack open a box of wine, so I'm not above this. Is it called Frieza? What's the name? Yeah, Franzia. Franzia, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, take oh, me back I, to the classics. I am not above any discount wine, let me tell you. So <laughs> nice. Um, tonight's movie's crawl. How do I describe this? Um Alien invaders come down from space, they bust up the wedding between two kingdoms. Princess gets stolen by the beast. The prince has to get some rogues together, like he literally recruits some thieves, a little wizard guy. Another wizard guy, a cyclops, and they go on a quest to find a magic weapon called the glaive, which will take the beast out. It's like the only thing in, that can kill him. And uh, I guess one can assume maybe the beast flies back to this planet every once in a while because why would the weapon, the only thing in the universe that can kill him is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So right. it's, and they have the prophecy. They, they do mention a prophecy. So I guess like, yeah, he's like in their prehistory, like, just like ours, like Ancient Alien says, oh, they were here in the past. They'll come again. They're in the, all of our books. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, as we mentioned briefly at the top of the hour that Dave's not here. However, he did send me some voicemails. Um, he has some uh, dangerous facts that he voicemailed me about this movie. Should I play? Should I play his voicemail? Play it. All right. Oh, wait. I should turn the volume on my phone back up, huh? Mm, that's, that's how that works. Place to Technology. Start. And then, if you can't hear it, Jordan, just pipe up and I'll try to make it louder. Perfect. But I'm going to play it into the mic. So here's Dave with his dangerous facts about crawl. All right. Here are some dangerous <laughs> dangerous facts about crawl. Uh, the studio put a lot of money into tie-in products for the movie having two different board games, an arcade game, a Marvel comic book series, 
a Frisbee with the glaive on it and an Atari 2600 game. So they really thought this was going to take off. Um, despite most of the cast being British, it was felt that actress Lisette Anthony's accent was too thick for Americans to understand. Because of this, her voice was replaced by American actress Lindsay Krauss, who was over 15 years older than Lisette, making the character sound older than she looks. Uh, Kroll was actually one of the most expensive productions for its time and had a staggering 23 sets built for it at the famous Pinewood Studios in London. Uh, writer Stanford Sherman also wrote past episode of The Ice Pirates, which we covered earlier this year. Uh, the movie has gone on to become a cult hit and referenced throughout pop culture in TV, movies, and video games. It has been referenced in South Park, American Dad, Family Guy, World of Warcraft, and Ready Player One. Okay, that's it for his dangerous details. Yeah, I heard it was an expensive movie and bombed when it came out. Um, I think it's cool that it's written by the same guy that wrote Ice Pirates. I love Ice Pirates. One could easily <laughs> guess which way I'm going to swing on Kroll, for that matter. Hmm. I, I honestly think dubbing the princess's voice, I guess it's a cultural thing. Like, maybe they couldn't understand her thick accent? I don't, I don't understand. That seems illogical. However... An older voice might make her sound more regal, and she's supposed to be in charge of a whole kingdom. So, right, I can I can fly with that. Mm -hmm. um, they built all the stuff. That's the most amazing thing about the scenery is they built all the interiors of the castles and the domain of the widow of the web. Which I know when you saw those giant spiders. <laughs> well, one of my favorite. I don't want to skip ahead, but it was really one of the coolest scenes. Like I thought that the set design was so cool in this movie. Yeah. So, and this is totally this is totally not really one of those lists, but of the things where it's mentioned, um, I kind of laughed when we first were going to watch this movie because there's a really memorable part, and I think Dave was also hating on Matthew McConaughey last week, but in. <laughs> And uh, it's what's the movie with Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey, the ro the rom com? Fool's Gold. No, there's the other one, the the one that's um, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. She's like uh, trying failure to, to launch. They're in three, aren't they? Failure that's to launch. That's. I mean, I could see them being just the perfect yeah. duo, but she like names his package and he he was like no it needs to be something like crawl the warrior king i don't know why <laughs> I just, like i thought I'm like maybe that's what they were maybe they were referring to this movie but or the atari game and i think that's the atari game because uh in the video game they couldn't put all the stuff from the movie like it doesn't have the cyclops and all his little team of warriors and his wizards and whatever um it just is him and it looks horrible, but, you know, I guess Atari players, I guess it's a good Atari game, as, as the trivia would have it. But well, They um, really sent it on the games for this. Hey, D hey, Dave, if you're out there listening in the Cosmos or wherever you are, your voicemail was about as exciting as you are in person. I always feel like if the audience is going to dip, it's during your trivia. Yeah. Not, not true, Dave, wherever you are. Oh. <laughs> you can't see the size of Jordan's eyes unless you're watching this video <laughs> on YouTube. And if you're there, why don't you take the time to like, comment, and subscribe and see if I'm being too mean or <laughs> suddenly find my courage when people aren't here to defend themselves like a sociopath. I was talking about psychopaths at the beginning of the hour. It's the Mental Health Podcast with John. <laughs> Which, John? Uh, there's 27 of them sitting out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not a disorder good. I have, but I will roll with a punchline. Yeah, that okay. was... Um, you kind of already, like, as you said, kind of naturally introduced favorite bits, so we should just mm -hmm. jump in. Let's do it. Um, obviously, a lot of the set design was, like, some of my favorite parts. I loved it when um, Lissa, the princess, is, like, trying to run away from the beast and, like, all of his minions, if you will, and... Mm. Uh, just like that scene was really cool. It almost looked like they filmed her like running in between two sheets. Like when the, like there was a passageway that was closing. Do you well, know what I'm possible, talking about? Right? Because in the background, yeah. it's a matte painting. So there's some, there's some real props where she is. And then there's a matte painting as they did stuff in these old school movies. Maybe, maybe they had her running in place. It's possible. Yeah. I just thought that whole scene was really cool. The spider was obviously 
one of my not favorites favorites but the web was really sick and then um my ultimate favorite bit is when they were on the mares <laughs> yeah the fire mares magical the fire horses mares, yes i just like i couldn't it was hilarious yeah people These are standing like the up world, and riding they're like one of the world's largest horses they might have the record for being the largest horse breed the clydesdales mm -hmm. And the movie got like 16 of them or something like that. Something ridiculous. So crazy. It makes uh, me think of like Budweiser. You know? Yeah, but they can run in the sky because their feet turn to fire. They're fire mares. I mean, fire on. mares. Duh. Okay. You You're definitely right. have to check your hat at the door because it's a movie where, I mean, a dude can stick his hand in lava and pull out a magic weapon. It's and fantasy. The arm, and the arm can be lit on fire and then, then be perfectly fine because right. he was supposed to exactly stick it there and get the magic weapon and move on yeah it's, it's exactly what you said it's fantasy it's make-believe fantasy you just gotta roll with it what about you oh. what was your favorite bit Woo. um i like the the battle in the swamp the fight between the slayers and the main guys that's what's cool about this is like i like the idea of aliens fighting medieval dudes Mm -hmm. Like they got swords and axes and they're getting shot with like laser beams. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of intense. And also the slayers, as you, you were talking about a little while ago, like the minions mm -hmm. of the so-called beast look really cool. Like their armor is cool and their helmets are cool. And it's like, I don't know if they're tiny little alien worms or. Yeah. I mean, the, their bodies either are like possessed dead humans. It doesn't really mm -hmm. go. It doesn't really. I, that's where my imagination goes. That these are like corpses that are reanimated by the worms that are inside the helmet. Right. It's like a host. Cause like yeah. when they cracked open yeah. that helmet and, like, and it like slid into yeah, the you earth. It open, but it's like cracking their skull and then like the parasite comes out or whatever. Right. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool the way they die. But really cool costumes. I agree. Like very kind of advanced looking for such like an older movie and it being fantasy. I did like the, the sci-fi aspect for sure. Yeah. It's a really good idea. I mean, that's why I like, but I guess people talk about the slow pacing. Like I watched a uh, Siskel and Ebert, you know, the old movie review show, and like the they're like the most. They might be besides Leonard Malton, they might be like the most famous of the classic movie review guys. But mm -hmm. they dogged it hard. Like they wouldn't suspend their disbelief at all. Like they couldn't handle the flying horses. They couldn't handle <laughs> reaching into like the mar marriage ceremony where she reached in and took the fire out, handed it to him, and he put it in. And she took it out. Like they were not having like any of it so, so you know like a, a lot of people i guess you know it, it didn't it didn't make it it came out when star wars did and it just died on impact but and like killed the main actor's career like ken marshall is a pretty good actor he's the main prince right and like he doesn't do anything after this for like four years or something and then like never gets like a, he doesn't get like brad pitt status you know what i mean like right um or kevin costner status but he's like one of those guys like he could have easily been in like 10 or 15 more movies right Right. But it's like, you know, he's box office poison. So he's done. Um, yeah, I mean, I wrote down, the only other thing I wrote down as far as favorites is like, I like Turquil, which is the the main bandit that becomes like his lieutenant, you know, played mm -hmm. by uh, an actor named Alan uh, Armstrong, who uh, I recognize as like the older stuff that he does because he's still acting or was mm -hmm. acting. I don't know if he's around. Hopefully he is. Um. And then Rel, just Rel the Cyclops. Like, there's not, I don't know any other sidekick Cyclops in any other live action movies that I can think of. They're usually bad guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But this one's, this one's kind of unique. Well, and he and saves he, the day, like, every time. Yeah, I mean, in, like, uh, his whole deal is supposedly Cyclops in this movie can see their own death. So they can basically do whatever they want until they reach that point or whatever. <laughs> and his whole thing was, like, he's conflicted because I, did he say, I don't remember, I can't. Did he turn his back on his fate or he or he's just getting close to it? One of the two. Either he's not ready to face it or it's getting close. Uh, because of the fight with the beast or whatever. Spo the spoiler alert, the Cyclops doesn't make it out, guys. <laughs> like, you know, shed your tears now. He's one of the best characters in the movie. Agreed. M mo actually, that's also unique, is like most of them die. Now I think like the two wizards get taken out. Yeah. Uh, it kind of was a little bit of like the 13th warrior where like you mm. kind of get this like band of you know there are a bunch of bandits that like go on this mission of death essentially with you know the the leader so i thought that was kind of interesting but yeah when um what's his name titch titch died i thought that was kind of sad because wasn't he the sorcerer yeah so i guess technically there are he's three wizards seer. he's like a trickster yeah there's one who sees things 
And he gets replaced by like a doppelganger, and they have to fight him as part of the swamp battle. Spoiler alert. Then the wizard friend who helps the prince when he's wounded in the first fight of the movie, when they first encounter the beast and his slayers breaking up the wedding, um, has a connection to the lady who's the spider woman. And then he gets he he dies in a gamble of death. So the others, because because like this, the one thing like talking about the settings again is. We see every stage of the quest because they go from like special environment to like special environment. Like they're mm -hmm. in a catacomb underground dwet, like layer of this, you know, widow of the web and they got to deal with her riddles. And then like as one of the wizards dies, sacrifice, whatever. So they can continue on to the next part. And they're like, we got to go here to get the magic horses. We got to go to this to do that. We got now we got to get the glaive, et cetera, et cetera. So. I mean, but are we running out of steam talking about fantasy movies? Probably, <laughs> you know, like, and, uh, and yeah, and, you know, yeah, exactly. Like not another ice pirates. So funny. Um, definitely. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but, uh, I find ice pirates more entertaining of the two, but. Okay. Okay. But I still like this movie. Yeah. We can rate it now. Let's see how, let's see where, if people can figure out how we're going to rate Rate the movie. I would give it a binge later. Um, would definitely watch it again. I thought again this the the sets were were very creative, but I'm not running to tell everybody to watch it immediately. <laughs> um, but I did like it better than Ice Pirates, and I do agree that it was a little bit of a slow, like you know the 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 pace, but. You know, maybe if it was a little quicker, it could have been like binge now. So binge later it is, but that's how it I feels. do feel like it's something um, make believe movie or fantasy movie fans have to see eventually, at least once. You know, it's got to be on the list somewhere. Um, it should binge now for me because it's just that famous. I was talking to David about that. I was like, should we cover it? Is it too popular, too famous? And he's like, John. It's still a weird niche movie. Like in your head, it's famous and right. popular, but it's not. He's like, I'm like, all right, it's a not uh, fine. Um, oh, he also sent us a favorite bit, so I guess I'll have to play his. Uh, yes, his favorite bit. Okay. Uh, some of my favorite bits include anytime Ergo uh, turns into something else, like turns into a goose, a pig, whatever, it has an interesting, weird sound effect, like sounds like a record tape rewinding. I don't know why they decided on that, but it works. Uh, interesting special effect for its day. Um, also, the ice spider, big spider, um, clearly Lord of the Rings uh, influence, but uh, it still works. It's still pretty creepy even to this day. That's interesting bit. Okay, so those were David's favorite bits. Love it. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't go wrong. Giant spider battle in your movie. You're going to do a Well, I guess you can't go wrong because it didn't. Oh, man. Wow. So everybody watch Crawl. Give it a fair Give it a fair shot. <laughs> um, Dave said his rating would be, he texted me his rating. He said, I realized I didn't send you a rating. Binge later. So I guess overall it's a binge later. Two out of three. Yeah. Um. Staff picks. If you watch anything else besides the movie of the week that you want to recommend to the audience, do you got something? No, I didn't watch. I literally haven't watched anything outside of our movies lately. Outside time, you know. What about you? Would you watch anything worthy? I feel like I'm hibernating already, and I know summer is not over yet. But I'm really? like trying to stockpile. You're like pre hob pre hibernating. Yeah, uh, it's like pre-hibernation mode. I don't know why I haven't Hibs. been able to bring myself to watch anything that was on my list, like even on my mm. own list, like haven't really finished Bob's Burgers and like I didn't mm. even finish Stranger Things. I, I think I did finish that maybe this week, the the finale. But it's just like, That's I don't how much know. she I'm, really liked Kroll. She just had to devote all her time and attention. That's it. You know it. Yeah. yeah. So I've just been, I feel like I've been stockpiling and I'm trying to save for winter. It's weird. I need to stop doing that. Should we see what Dave was watching? What did Dave watch? Uh, for staff picks this week, I actually watched a new documentary on Shudder of all places, called This Is Guar, which is actually a music documentary, which you think would not fit with Shudder, but actually works really well, uh, since this is a band that was more known for their stage shows. 
uh, for, you know, spewing blood, semen, fake semen, breast milk, whatever. They'd chop off fake heads and have giant dinosaurs. Um, this is a band I've always been aware of. I've always wanted to see a live show of theirs, but was never fortunate enough to. Um, hmm. Even if you're not familiar with the band, um, it's really an interesting documentary worth watching. They dress up as um, monsters. As I found out, they're, I mean, they were a band, but they were more like a art collective, as they would say. Um, again, uh, even if you've never heard of Guar, uh, it's really worth a watch. Uh, one of the better documentaries I've seen in a while, music or otherwise. This is Guar on Shudder. Um, I've known about Guar for a while. Actually, the lead singer died. I don't know who took over. Somebody yeah. else took over for the lead singer. But I, you've probably seen them. They they're like, I mean, Slipknot has the scary masks, right. but Guar has like full body armor and like bestial faces and like a, like a skeleton type face. So almost like Skeletor or something from like He Man or something like that. Um, okay. It's and how do you spell Guar? Uh, G W A R. Interesting. Okay. Oh, very. He didn't really tell us what kind of music they make or what he he did. Like it's so such a non-spoiler uh, staff pick, but it's right. kind of cool though. Yeah, I would watch that. That sounds that looks really interesting. Yeah. So if you got access to Shutter, folks, you know, watch this uh, Guar documentary just dropped. Or if you're a big fan of music docs, I'm sure it lines up with the. Taste in music docs. I don't know. Um, I almost watched it, but I had other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good selection. Yeah. I was re watching a documentary, but it was based off of like kind of our location because we were in St. George. Hmm. We went to, um, so we did part of Horseshoe Bend, which is like just above the Grand Canyon, and you have to drive through Colorado City. Your stalkers Thanks. know exactly where it is. Yep. But it was uh, Keep Sweet, Pray, and Obey on I th on Netflix, I think. It's about. Oh, wait. Like, is this polygamous? about the guy in his 30, like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, another polygamous dude in his 30 mm -hmm. wives, Warren, sister wives Warren, or whatever? Warren Jeffs. Yeah. Mm. It was pretty, pretty interesting. I've been on a documentary kick, and I feel like that those have been the only things that I've been watching outside of this, but yeah. That's a real challenge. If you can get them to drink the Kool-Aid or marry you 30 times over and be okay with a bunch of other wives or husbands, Literally. depending on what kind of cult we're in. But that's like the true test of a salesman. It's like, I've sold everything. I've sold, I've sold Mercedes Benz. I've sold things over the phone. Now I'm going to sell you God's message. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> The real God, because I can marry these 30 people. And uh, when I say it's time to drink the Kool-Aid, y'all going to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true, though. Yeah, I guess you're right. Ultimate salesperson. Not so to wax funny. philosophical or dip into the waters of a different podcast category. But um, you got to follow the joke to its natural conclusion. You know what I'm saying? I love that. You know, you got to. We were making some jokes for sure. So... There's actually a, sh uh, a show about a family of televangelists, The Righteous Gemstones with Danny McBride. It's on HBO. Chuck got John Goodman is the dad. It's oh, I bet funny. it's good. Yeah. And I mean, Danny McBride's hilarious. I think so. And they actually did an adaptation of like, do you know who Tammy Faye is? Like she's known for like the makeup and the eyes and she like her and her husband were on TV for like, I don't know, 15 years maybe. Oh, no, I'm not. It's familiar. like really old school TV. Like inspirational um, belief TV or whatever that's called. I don't know. Whatever the Christian TV network is. But um, they might have been on PBS too. I don't, I don't know. They were like one of those couples, you know, like they went around. Well, televangelism. That, it's like that didn't exist before TV. That's like TV plus evangelism. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. You know, like, Dave, we need a fact sheet on this televangelism. Uh Anyway, movement or whatever. But yeah, Tammy Faye is like a standout individual or character. But then like there's all this notorious stuff going on behind the scenes, you know, and like her and the husband get divorced. And there was just like a movie about her life that came out recently with like, uh, which one was it? Like these are the two actresses that always get mixed up or actors, performers, whatever, players. Um, 
Jessica somebody. Who's the one with the red hair? You know what I'm talking about? She's in the dinosaur movies that just came out. The new Jurassic Park stuff. Oh, I don't know. Man, that was a bad movie. It's also in Zero Dark Thirty. All right. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's so funny you bring up Zero Dark Thirty because I just watched that like so, a couple weeks ago. The other the other performer she looks like is um, Bryce Dylan Howard. Jessica Chastain. That's who's in Zero Dark Thirty. That's who's in this other movie that I'm talking about, I think. Ooh. Unless it is Bryce <laughs> Dylan Howard. Howard. No, Eyes of Tammy Faye. It, uh, yeah, it's got um, Jessica Chastain. Oh, if you like her, though, have you seen Molly's Game? Where she runs an illegal poker tournament in Hollywood. Yes, so good. She was the former Olympian that got injured or whatever. That uh, yeah, Molly's game is good. Yeah, it was super good. I'll have to watch the eyes of Tammy Faye. It looks. It so we gave them really plenty, plenty of stuff to watch. Go watch. They're hooked. Them. They're hooked up. They are. But first, start with Kroll. Oh yeah. Dorsten paid for by the people that hope for a sequel. <laughs> Kroll, too. I think I could see it happening. There is another Kroll. Nick Kroll. His, his, his last name is pronounced like Kroll, but it's spelled like with an O instead of a U. Yeah. He had a comedy show for a little while. He, he actually, is. he does a... What does he do now? You know Everything. the cartoon about puberty? Big Mouth? You know, yeah, Big Mouth. He does. He's a Big Mouth on Big Mouth. There you go. He sure is. He's a little... Strange guy, but I, I don't know. You know who probably silently reads everybody's posts and doesn't respond? Who? Nick Kroll. He probably does. I'll just let that linger so it's awkward and it just disappears. <laughs> I was like, Dave's not here to... To, to have you cut him off. So it's me today. Yeah, pretty much. Love it.